he collected his he gathered his his colleagues and his 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 family and it was night time then the moon was out and the the sand was sparkling and it was the the hot sand and this was saving the deen preserving the deen just like the way the deen was was spread the same way he preserved the deen and safeguarded the deen. He said, my objective of coming here, and he gathered his family and his colleagues together. And you know the event very well. He said, you know very well why I have come here. What was my objective? Said Hazrat Hussain, radiallahu anhu. He said that I don't want a kingdom, I don't need leadership, I don't want pomp, I don't need glory, I have no greed for material goods. If you ask me about sultanate and kingdom and being a leader, if I wanted leadership, and to be the king. Then we have had the various examples before this, that subhanAllah, that for example, we don't need the kingdom, we don't need leadership, we don't accept this as something that we need or run after. And he said there was one reason for coming, and the objective of coming was what? That my grandfather, his sunnah, was being diminished, or it was being trampled upon. Subhanallah, what a great, great step he took as a Hussein. For which reason? The Nabi al Karim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sunnah was being, you can say, compromised and compromised upon and looked down upon. And the, the, the greatness and the sanctity of the sunnah was being lowered in the eyes of the people at that time. And he said, what a great, great lofty action of the sunnah is being looked down upon. People's esteem and importance for the sunnah is being lowered. And halal is being reduced. And haram is being promoted. And greater than the big, more important than that, that the manners and the respect for the deen is being reduced. And the rest of it, today we see all of those things even in our homes today, that morning and evening we look ourselves. And we see with experience what is happening. That, there's no need for me to say anything in detail. The rest, all of the actions were the same that we even see today. They have increased. They will have not reduced. And today, in front of our own very own eyes in our homes, in our environment, those things will have increased. That um, Hazrat, Imam Hussein Radhiunun mentioned that day, those things were present at that time, what started, and in such weird ways, those actions have improved, sorry, increased, multiplied in such weird ways and in bad ways. So this is the event that came at that night and that came that day in which we see and we hear and we read. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends people like Hazrat Imam Hussain, Hussain radiallahu anhu and he opposes the person who was Yazid that time. So Fir'auniyat at that time, yes. So at that time we had Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and he stood fast and firm against Fir'aun. But before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa there were no... Uh, other prophets to come and he was the final prophet and after that was this next challenge and so Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu came to explain that these actions that are taking place nowadays are bad they are wrong I oppose this I stand firm he says that even the young children no problem if my children and my family even if their lives go no problem the small young children he said that that's not an issue if this uh, if their lives are lost but such an evil if it comes in the deen that the sunnah is being compromised and it's being laughed at it's being mocked it's being uh, left out of the life it's being taken out of the homes wife is saying something the husband is saying something else the child is saying something the children are saying something else and this person is doing this action in one room in the house this is happening in another room this action is happening this newspaper says this the TV says this and in the masjid one person goes into the home the other person does something else wrong different ways of life in the same place the Allah Ta'ala will grab when people leave the day in this event of, the, of Karbala the Islam Islam comes alive from every event of Karbala. This is an ajeeb, ajeeb uh, statement that mashallah, many martyrdoms occurred in the history of Islam, many great personalities. But what reason is this that a person comes and stops on the event of Ashura? And Allah Ta'ala kept this event at that time that we cannot forget this event. Because Islam is revived at the time of every Karbala. Every Karbala event will revive Islam. And Allah Ta'ala said, that I already put the, the value of Ashura before this event, many years before this event took place, that with every Nabi, the day of Ashura was elevated even more. Even more. And the fast was further before, on the previous Ummahs, on this day of Ashura. It was further, if we read up. So 
how comes that this event in which 72 members of the family of Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu that they came there to give their efforts to promote the haq and we see many events took place before this event of Karbala with Hazrat Hussein radiallahu but Allah Ta'ala said many famous occasions occurred on this day of 10th of Muharram of Ashura but Allah Ta'ala wanted to save the deen remember when the deen is saved it doesn't get, so get saved once but many times events like this will take place and on each occasion the deen will have to be protected and safeguarded how? In just one way. How? Who do we need to follow at that time? Just like Hazrat Imam Hussain radiallahu stood firm. And what did he do? He gave his time and effort and energy. Islam is revived and comes to life after every Karbala. So this is such a message. Nabi al Karim sallallahu alayhi wa the grandson of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Hussain, he gave us a message, a learning. We need to think about this now. There are two things we need to learn. Either we take the mission of Husseini, alhamdulillah, and with the steadfastness, we live our life on this mission. And we don't know how many years or months or days we have left and then we will pass away. We will leave this world. So for this, for, for everyone, if we don't do the fard, obviously we'll be punished. For this fard, that's on its own level. Wajib is fard as well, compulsory. But after that, everyone will do the fard. But the question arises that the real genuine article, the tariqah, the method, the way of life, the mannerisms, the habits, the Allah Ta'ala said, I sent my Nabi Wasallam for this reason. To teach you how to live. You cannot learn what is a liar. You cannot learn what is honesty. You cannot define what is right and wrong. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, came to teach you. If he says something is a lie, it's a lie. If he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said this is honesty, then that's honesty. You cannot define that line. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would define that line. He is the sunnah. He is your guide, guidance. And the sunnah is your source of uh, forgiveness. And this is the path to paradise. And this is the path to, the, to become the beloved of Allah,